volume of one or both of the atrial chambers is commonly encountered in clinical practice and occurs secondary to a range of conditions including ischemia and valvular heart disease. In a proportion of cases, atrial enlargement produces diagnostic changes on the ECG. It is important to be able to recognize these changes as enlargement of one or both of the chambers places patients at risk of multiple complications, which may be preventable if appropriate steps are taken. This is a two-dimensional schematic showing the normal right and left atria, the cardiac conducting system outlined in grey, and a single large square taken from the ECG readout of lead 2. We will use this schematic to study the manner in which atrial depolarization produces the normal P wave on the ECG, and to understand how enlargement of the atrial chambers produces diagnostic changes in P wave morphology. The spread of depolarization through the atrial chambers is shown here in blue, and there are some features of this process which we would like you to note at this point. In the frontal plane, atrial depolarization moves through the chambers downwards and towards the left from the SA node. The normal P wave axis, indicated here by the blue arrow, therefore travels more or less straight down lead 2 in the frontal plane. Hence, as you can see here, P waves originating from a sinus discharge are usually strongly positive in the inferior leads and tend to be of maximal amplitude in lead 2. Also, with an axis at plus 60 degrees, the P wave is positive in most of the frontal leads, but of course is negative in AVR. Returning to our atrial schematic, you will also notice that, because of the location of the SA node, depolarization of the right atrium is complete somewhat earlier than that of the left. The normal P wave, therefore, can be considered as being composed of two overlapping components. One early component, predominantly due to right atrial depolarization, and a second later component due to left atrial depolarization. Depolarization of both chambers is normally complete within 0.11 seconds, approximately two and a half small squares. This simple concept of the normal P wave as a composite of two temporarily separated depolarization events becomes important when we go on to consider the changes in P wave morphology associated with chamber enlargement. Applying the rules we've used through this course, we would expect enlargement of the atrial chambers to produce predictable changes in the morphology of the P wave. This is indeed the case and criteria have been established for the ECG diagnosis of atrial enlargement. The right atrium enlarges downwards and towards the right. In right atrial enlargement, therefore, the magnitude of current spreading downwards from the SA node in the frontal plane is greatly increased. Consequently, the amplitude of the right atrial component of the P wave increases dramatically in the inferior leads illustrated here in lead 2. However, even though the right atrial component is prolonged in duration, it still falls within the limit of normality defined by the end of the left atrial component. Therefore, in right atrial enlargement, the recorded P wave is increased in amplitude but is of normal duration, that is, less than 2.5 small squares in width. You will also appreciate that as the right atrium enlarges downwards and towards the right, the P wave axis may shift towards AVF. Hence, as shown here, in right atrial enlargement, the P wave in lead AVF can become more prominent than that in lead 2. In practice, a P wave taller than 2.5 millimeters, that is 2.5 small squares, 
in any of the inferior leads is indicative of right atrial enlargement. In left atrial enlargement, as the chamber enlarges away from the SA node, the component of the P wave due to left atrial depolarization is prolonged. The effect of this is to prolong the recorded P wave beyond the normal limit of 0.11 seconds. A P wave in any lead on the ECG longer than 0.11 seconds in duration, in practical terms more than 2.5 small squares in width, is highly suggestive of left atrial enlargement. In addition, in some cases of left atrial enlargement, Increased asynchrony in the depolarization of the chambers may result in two readily identifiable separate peaks in the P wave due to right and left atrial depolarization. This notched morphology in P waves is commonly seen in normal ECGs. As we've seen, a degree of asynchrony between the two chambers is quite normal. However, if the separation between the two peaks is equal to or greater than 0.05 seconds in duration, that is one small square or more separation between the peaks, this is highly suggestive of left atrial enlargement. A notched P wave with this diagnostic degree of separation between the right and left atrial peaks is referred to as P mitrale. True P mitrale, as defined here, is very specific for left atrial enlargement. P waves are generally positive in the chest leads, but tend to be of low amplitude as the spread of atrial depolarization is less prominent in the horizontal plane compared to that in the frontal plane. However, one point of note in these leads, as the left atrium lies somewhat posterior to the right chamber, Left atrial depolarization moving posteriorly and to the left may produce a small negative terminal deflection in the P wave recorded in lead V1. This is observed in many normal ECGs. However, in the presence of left atrial enlargement, this finding can be dramatically exaggerated. Enlargement of the chamber is usually directed posteriorly and to the left and this can result in a very prominent negative terminal component to the P wave in lead V1. A negative P wave component in lead V1 greater than one small square in width and depth is suggestive of left atrial enlargement. This slide summarizes the ECG diagnosis of atrial enlargement. As you can see from the figures quoted here, P waves taller than 2.5 millimeters in amplitude in any of the inferior leads is a very specific finding for right atrial enlargement. And P mitrale is very specific for enlargement of the left chamber. However, you will appreciate from the poor figures for sensitivity that many patients with underlying enlargement of the chambers do not demonstrate these abnormalities on their ECG. Note also that the more sensitive ECG criteria for diagnosing left atrial enlargement are considerably less specific than P mitrale. This is an area we will discuss in more detail in the quiz section. We would now ask you to complete the quiz for section 2 before going on to study the ECG and acute coronary syndromes in section 3.